Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about how to find the Lagrange error bound or the remainder um, for a Taylor polynomial. So there's kind of a lot to know. It's kind of a big topic. Um, let's let's see if we can do it. So first of all, you need to know how to find the Taylor polynomial at centered at x equals a. So I'm just going to write that down. Um, so the Taylor polynomial, which I'm calling t of x, is equal to uh, f of a plus f prime of a, the quantity x minus a to the first over one factorial plus f double prime of a, the quantity x minus a to the second over two factorial plus, and you keep going until you get to the nth derivative evaluated at a, um, the quantity x minus a to the n all over n factorial. So uh, the key thing to notice there really is that, you know, it always matches up. So it's first derivative, first power, one factorial, it'll be 10th derivative, 10th power, and 10 factorial. So those always match up. Um, the other thing to notice is this is an nth degree polynomial. And when you get the nth degree polynomial, that requires going up to the nth derivative of the function. So that's actually a big deal because we need to know what n is, mostly so we can go one further. Um, so we're here to talk about the Lagrange error bound. And that says, um, so if we approximate f of c, so the idea is we're going to approximate the function with t of c, then what we can do is we can find the maximum error. So the maximum error is going to satisfy the following thing. So the maximum error is, so here we get this absolute value. So it's the absolute value of the error is going to be less than or equal to, and it looks confusing, but it's not so bad. Uh, it's m and then times the absolute value of c minus a. So um, c is what we're approximating, right? That's the value we're plugging in. Um, and then a is the center to the n plus first. So n is the degree of the polynomial, so you go one more than that. And then all over n plus one factorial. So take a second and just compare that to the terms of the Taylor polynomial. And you'll notice that it almost looks like uh, the first term that you left off, right? So the first term you left off, if you go back up to that polynomial would have been the n plus first derivative at a, x minus a to the n plus first over n plus one factorial. So it almost looks exactly like that, but instead of the n plus first derivative at a, we have this mysterious m thing there. Um, and then we've plugged in for x, so instead of x minus a, we have c minus a. Um, and that's actually, and then the absolute values are there just to make sure that we get a positive out of this. Um, so that's what it looks like. So let's make sure you really know everything that's happening there. So I just recopied all of that. And uh, c is the value that we're going to sub in. So we're finding, uh, we're approximating f of c. So c is the value that we're subbing in. And then uh, a is the center for the polynomial. n is the degree of the polynomial. And it's important to realize that's the highest derivative we used for the polynomial. And then m is, so this is a big deal, m is, so it's the maximum of the absolute value of the n plus first derivative. So it's the maximum of the absolute value of the n plus first derivative. I find the more often you say that, the easier it is to remember. Maximum of the absolute value of the n plus first derivative on an interval that has a and c as the endpoints. So sometimes a is bigger than c, sometimes c is bigger than a. So a and c are gonna be the endpoints and you just write the interval correctly. So it's the maximum of the absolute value of the n plus first derivative on the interval that has a and c as its endpoints. So that's how we're gonna calculate it. So what I thought I'd do as an example, um, maybe, oh, well there's two more things I wanted to say on this, this page actually. Uh, sometimes we just use a convenient value that's actually larger than uh, the value satisfying the maximum of the absolute value of the n plus first derivative on the interval of a and c as the endpoints. Um, so that'll happen sometimes. Um, and then also, uh, it's significantly easier than it sounds. So it sounds really confusing, but it's not actually that bad. So let's do an example. So we want to find the maximum error using the fourth degree Taylor polynomial to f of x equals the natural log of one plus x at x equals zero. So we're centering it at x, at x equals zero, and we're going to approximate um, f of 0 0.2. So I'm trying to color code things for you. So we have the center is zero, um, the value we're plugging in is 0.2, and then fourth degree polynomial. So when I do these, I always make a table. So my table looks like this. It's got n as one column, the nth derivatives as another column, the nth derivatives at the center as another column. And you can see 
Um, for the fourth degree polynomial, I just need four derivatives, but I added a row. So what you wanna do is you always wanna go one extra derivative when you're dealing with error because you're gonna need that to figure out what m is. So I went one extra row. Um, then I wrote the polynomial. You could simplify that if you want, but it doesn't really matter in this case. Um, and then the idea is that I'm approximating f of 0.2. So f of 0.2 is approximately t of 0.2. And then I just use a calculator and the calculator said that t of 0.2 is uh, 1,367 over uh, 7,500. So that's my estimate, but I'm really trying to find the error in, getting, in using that estimate. So uh, what I need to do is think about it. So I use the fourth derivative to make the polynomial, so I need the fifth derivative to figure out what m is. So I'm gonna look at the table where I wrote the fifth derivative, and so I think m is gonna be the maximum of the absolute value of the fifth derivative in this case. Um, and then on the interval from, so the center is zero and I'm substituting 0 0.2, so the interval in this case is zero to 0 0.2. So I need the maximum of the absolute value of the fifth derivative on the interval from zero to 0 0.2. So in this case, that looks like, I'm gonna search this function, 24 over the quantity one plus x to the fifth, um, on the interval from zero to 0 0.2. A thing that happens frequently, like this function is a decreasing function, and since it's decreasing, I know that the maximum must occur at the left end point. So the maximum, I'm just gonna substitute zero in and get 24. M is gonna be 24 in this case. So it's almost always the case that the derivative you're looking at is either increasing or decreasing. So M almost always comes from the left or the right end point. So keep that in mind when you're doing the problems. Um, so I wanna find the error. So the absolute value of the error is less than or equal to uh, that value of m, so 24, times absolute value of its um, c, the value you're plugging in, minus a, which is the center. So absolute value of c minus a, raised to the n plus first. We use the fifth derivative to find m, so the exponent here is gonna be five. Um, and then over five factorial. So that I use the calculator for, and I got one over 15,625, which is a very small number. So this is a very accurate estimate. So that's actually it, we finished that problem. Let's take a look at what it means. So I'm just gonna show you a calculator screenshot. So I use the calculator to find the natural log of 1.2, which is what you get when you plug 0.2 into the function. So uh, you can see that value. Then I use the calculator to approximate um, 1,367 over 7,500. And you can see they're very, very close. And then what I did was I created this interval. So the true value of the natural log of 1.2 should be in between my estimate minus my error bound and my estimate plus my error bound. So I just asked the calculator, is that true? Did it work? And the calculator just returned true. So we actually got it to work. And uh, so on the next page, I'm just gonna kind of summarize some things. So the first thing is you just have to memorize this, the absolute value of the error less than or equal to m times the absolute value of c minus a to the m plus one over m plus one factorial, where m is the maximum of the absolute value of the m plus first derivative on the interval from blah to blah, from c to a, or a to c, depending on which one's bigger. Um, so make sure you have that memorized, because if you don't know that, you just can't do the problems. Um, if you're given a function, you should make the table so you can make a polynomial, and then add one extra row of derivatives to that table, because you're gonna need that to figure out what m is, um, in doing the problems, you'll find that m is almost always going to come from the left or the right end point um, because the derivative you're dealing with tends to be either increasing or decreasing. And there's this other weird caveat. We didn't do one like it in this video, but I'll point it out. If you're told some weird fact about a particular derivative, so you might be told that the absolute value of the seventh derivative is always less than 12. If you're told that kind of thing, then the problem is really just telling you exactly what to use for m. So if you're told the absolute value of the seventh derivative is less than 12, the problem's telling you that m should just be 12. Um, so that's about it. It's, it's kind of an important topic. People are afraid of it, but they shouldn't be because it's pretty straightforward once you understand it. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.